going on another flight and thought I'd code something again, something small so the battery doesn't run out. I thought I'd just draw a plane procedurally. Some people like drawing to pass the time, I prefer coding something instead. And whether it becomes useful or not, I guess we'll just wait and see. Now, here's how it went. I began making a basic HTML web page with a canvas element. The canvas is transparent at the moment, so I'm giving it a background color, and I don't want the page to have any margins or scroll bars, so I removed them in CSS. The canvas should also stretch the entire window. Now, I thought I'd implement the plane in its own file and generate it in the center screen with a size of 300 by 150, like so. To draw the plane, I grabbed the reference to the 2D drawing context and passed it to the plane draw method which I had to implement. Oh, time for the drinks. I'm taking the blueberry juice again. It's really good. Now, where was I? Ah, yes, the plane class. I just set the attributes in the constructor and the draw method... Let's just draw a bounding box to see if everything so far works the way we want it. And it does. Great. Now, I thought I'd focus on the front part of the plane. This front part will also have a left, top, width and a height, and I used a rectangle with rounded corners because it's something I haven't used much and wanted to practice. Repositioning a bit, and I set the roundness value to a variable like so to be clear what the last parameter here controls. Then I thought it looks like the front of one of those old biplanes, so I decided to make one and started with the propeller in front. After defining some helper variables, I thought I'd draw a circle where the propeller attaches to the body. And after a bit of fine-tuning, I was happy with the size and placement. Then define the size for the propeller and used an ellipse. Again, after a bit of fine-tuning, it looked nice, I think. And it was time for the wings. I thought I'd do the same thing as for the propeller, but horizontally. I said horizontally. That's better. And a biplane has two wings on top of each other, so let's make another one at the bottom. Nice, but I didn't like the symmetry, so I moved it a bit back like so. Then I thought to draw those bars and strings connecting the wings, but I also thought I'm running out of battery and decided to leave them for later if time. Now switching focus to the back of the plane instead. Thought I'd use another round rectangle here, and after some adjustments I was happy with the proportions. It just needed some details, like that place where the pilot sits. I set the global composite operation to destination out to cut a hole, and move the hole at the top so it looks like a semicircle in just the right spot. Then, to draw the tail, I couldn't think of any default shape that can be used in a clever way, so I defined some helper variables and started drawing it line by line. And after some fine-tuning, it was okay, but still lacking some detail so I thought to draw a wheel used for landing. As I started drawing it, I thought this would be a nice thing to animate, so the angle can change and it would seemingly lower below the plane when needed. So I kept the wheel angle as an attribute of the plane, and depending on that, created these helper variables to draw the wheel. This function was becoming too long, so I took out drawing the wheel like this. It was just a line for the support and a circle which I made thicker like so. I moved drawing the wheel below the plane so it looks like coming from beneath. Then, because I have this function now, I can easily add another wheel at the front. Renamed this function and made it more general by passing the location as a parameter. Called it where we draw the front part and voila! To control the angle, I just added a simple slider to the page and when the value changes, it updates the wheel angle attribute and redraws the plane. Didn't work. I forgot how the event listener is called, and after some trial and error, I got it to work. I just have to clear the canvas before redrawing the plane, and I don't want this bounding box here either. I did a bit of fine tuning so the wheels would disappear when I don't want them to be visible, and I thought I'd do more of this stuff like change the angle of the wings using another slider. I mean, designing the plane could have easily been done in Photoshop, Illustrator, or whatever drawing software you want. But these animations wouldn't be easy to do like that. You'd have to generate a bunch of sprites, and just think about all the possible combinations. Bah, a lot of work. I prefer what I'm doing here. Now, where was I? 
Oh, I did the wings already. I took out the angle of the wings as a class attribute and rewrote the function pretty much using the translate and rotate methods from the canvas context. I had to do this because I wanted them to turn relative to some center point. I still had some battery, so I decided to draw those crisscross lines. They looked nice, I think, but I wanted to have some smoother animations. Those sliders were just updating on mouse up. Couldn't remember the proper event listener to update on drag, so I made an animation loop instead, where the plane attributes update on every frame. Much smoother. Nice. But the propeller isn't moving, so a quick trick is just to hide it on every other frame. So we need the frame count, and I just set the global alpha to zero so they disappear on every even frame. It was moving a bit too fast, so I switched to animating on twos, and it was much better. Then I added the control for switching the engine on and off, polished some things, and you can try the end result on my website. Here's an animation I made by just playing with the sliders while screen recording. I then cropped, did the blue screen removal, and moved the plane along a path in Premiere Pro. This could definitely be used in a game. Let me know in the comments if you want to see something like that. Thanks for watching and see you guys.